Uh, so my name is Marco Aurelio, and I'm a doctoral student in physics here in the graduate program in physics of the Federal University of Pará. And today I'm going to talk about massless scale scattering by Ayon Beato Garcia, regular black holes, which is a work that was done in collaboration with Professor Luis Leitch, which uh, who works in the uh, Federal Institute uh, at the Altamira campus, and Professor Luis Crispino, uh, who is my advisor. So uh, this is the outline of my talk. I will start with a brief introduction about the main topic of this presentation. Then I will discuss some aspect about the classical, semi-classical semi scattering. Uh, next, I will, uh, I will comment on the partial waves approach that we use to obtain the differential scattering cross-section. And finally, I will present our main results in the final remarks. So let's move to the, to the introduction. I, I would like to point out that this work, this presentation is mainly based, based on this work here, scattering properties of charged black holes in the linear and Maxwell's letter dynamics that we have published this year. So, uh, uh, so uh, in this introduction, I will, I will, so basically what we did was the following. We consider the, the, the first exact regular, uh, regular charge black hole solution obtained in 1998 and study the massless scale scattering in this background, which is a black hole with, with spherically symmetric. And regular means that the solution doesn't have uh, uh, intrinsic singularity. So basically, the authors of this work here, uh, Jon Beato and Alberto Garcia, considering the minimal coupling between general relativity and, uh, uh, and the nonlinear electro dyna dynamics model, and the uh, nonlinear electro dynamics model, so, and uh, by solving the corresponding field equations, they were capable to obtain the first model of regular black hole. And we basically understood the massless scale scattering the, with this context. So uh, we are very familiar with general relativity. We have discussed this a lot in, during the, the workshop and uh, in, in several other contexts. But uh, uh, although nonlinear electron dynamics is a theory as old as general relativity, it has started to be used uh, when the context of, of black holes only in the last two decades. So in the next slides, I will try to, to give some uh, uh, introduction to what is the nonlinear electrodynamics. So essentially, this is the printout of the header of the first, associated with the first model of nonlinear electrodynamics. Uh, this work will pub were pu was published in, 19, in 1934 by Maxi Born and Leopold Infield. Uh, we know that the classical electromagnetic theory has some problems. For instance, uh, the energy associated with a point charge uh, diverge as we approach the center. So basically, the main idea that motivated this work was try to propose a new classical theory of the electromagnetism for which, uh, fin uh, for, for which physical quantities, such as the energy of a point charge, remain finite. So although the... Uh, Although the Bond and Efield, uh, they, they, the model of nonlinear electrodynamics were capable to do it, to find a, fi a finite energy for the point charge, the problem is that the theory uh, is not renormalizable. So it cannot be seen as a generalization of Maxwell's theory, right? But in, in, as a matter of fact, this is uh, actually uh, a problem with nonlinear electrodynamics. So far, we do not have a uh, uh, a theory of nonlinear electrodynamics to have models that can work as effective theories in some contexts. For instance, the Bonifield theory can be used in the context of string theories, as uh, as the because the Lagrangian associate, associated with the Bonifield theory can describe the electromagnetic fields in some models of string theories. But there also uh, there is a, a other models of nonlinear electrodynamics. For instance, the euler heisenberg theory that can describe uh, physical phenomena that actually, actually exist in nature. For instance, the light-by-light -light scattering is a phenomenon that was predicti predicted by the euler heisenberg theory, which is a model of nonlinear electrodynamics. And the vacuum by refrigerance is another, is another physical phenomenon that is predicted by 
uh, 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 model of nonlinear electrical dynamics. So essentially, uh, the nonlinear electrical dynamics theory is an, an attempt to generalize the Maxwell theory in the strong field regime. But uh, as far as I, uh, uh, as we know, we do not have uh, a theory that consistently do this. But we have several models that appear in several contexts in physics that, ex that explain some phenomena as effective theories. So uh, besides that, we know that uh, black holes are not alone in the universe. And we have several reviews about it, uh, discussing the, uh, that black holes are surrounded by matter and things like that. And we know that one possibility to better understand the, 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 the properties of black holes is study how these objects interact with the astrophysical environment, right? Is study how, uh, for instance, how these objects interact with, uh, with matter. So we can do this from a classical perspective. So basically, you can get a spherically symmetric black hole, for instance, the uh, Ian Beato Garcia regular black hole, and study this from a classical perspective, uh, analyze the geodesics, things like that. This is a possibility. But here, we are, not, we are interested in studying not, the, uh, not uh, the black hole from the, the classical, for this classical perspective, new geodesics, things like that. We want to stu study the differential scattering cross-section of a massless that scale of field and use the classical and semi-classical results as a check of the consistency of our results. So this is the main idea of our work, and, I, and this is what we are, I'm going to mainly discuss here. So the ABG space-time is, is given by uh, this line element here, which is a static and spherically symmetric space-time, where the metric function is given by this equation two, where M is the mass and Q is the electric charge, right? So uh, at infinity, the ABG metric function behaves as given by equation three, where these red, term he red terms here are actually the Heisenhausen metric function. And that is a manifestation of the fact that the ABG net model uh, satisfies a correspondence with the Maxwell theory in the weak field uh, limit. Uh, these uh, high order terms here presented in the expansion of the ABG metric, fun metric function at infinity are important when we, are, when, when we try to compute, for instance, the weak deflection angle, of, uh, right? So, as we approach the center, the ABG metric function behaves as given by equation four, while this blue term here is actually the Decita metric function. So uh, as R tends to zero, the, uh, the metric function tends to one. And if you, and if you check the, the scale invariants, we, we will see that the solution, the, all the scale invariants are regular for, for, for uh, arbitrary variables of the radial coordinate. And this solution is indeed regular. Oh, that means that the ABG metric function does not, do not have, uh, the ABG solution does not have intrinsic singularity. So uh, to give more details about the space-time itself, in figure one, we compare the metric functions of ABG and Heisenostrom black holes for uh, different choices of the normalized electric charge. This normalized electric charge is the ratio between the charge of the black hole and the, uh, the, uh, uh, to the extreme charge value. value. We, we uh, in general, use this when we, try, when we are trying to compute different geometries, right? Different charge geometries. So as you can see, the causal structure of the ABG space-time is very similar to the Heisenostrom one. For alpha less than one, we have two horizons, the, uh, the event horizons, the event horizon, the Cauchy horizon. And for alpha equals one, we have a, 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 an extreme charge black hole. And as alpha tends to zero, we obtain the Schwarzschild case uh, as expected. So uh, now let's move to the classical and semi-classical scattering. We start with talking about the geodesic scattering. So the, defect, the deflection angle of scattered massless particles is given by equation five, where gamma b uh, is uh, defined by equation six. And with this, capital uh, T is given by equation seven, where b is the impact parameter and r zero is the radius of maximum approximation of the, of the black hole. So uh, the classical differential scattering cross-section is given by equation eight, uh, where the deflection angle given by, given by capital theta 
and the scheduling angle theta are related uh, by true and pi, where n is, uh, is actually the number of times that the particle opts the black hole. If you look to the, uh, to the uh, equation six, we can try to, 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 uh, to solve this equation for arbitrary values of the radial coordinate. But the problem is that when we work with geometries that are associated with nonlinear electrodynamics, dynamics, this is very complicated. And uh, actually, you can try to do is to solve this uh, in the weak field approximation. So by using the geodesic method, method that is basically solve the equation six, and considering the weak field expansion of the deflectional angle, we can write the deflection angle for the ABG regular black hole as given by equation, sorry, as given by, uh, by equation nine. So this blue term here is the Einstein's deflection angle. And these two terms here are actually the Heisenhoff's weak deflection angle. And this is a result that we uh, expect to obtain since the ABG regular black hole uh, uh, behaves as the Heisenhoff solution in the weak field limit. But we can see that the, in the, the, the terms, uh, the ter this third term here is different for the Heisenhoff case. And the main reason is because it's due to the high order contributions of the ABG metric function that affects the terms associated with the chart here. So the classical differential scattering cross section for small scattering angles is given by equation 10. And as you can see, uh, this, uh, this is the same result for, that we obtain for the Heisenhoff case, as, as expected. And we also see that uh, for small, va that the classical differential scattering cross section diverts for small scattering angles as theta tends to zero. And the black hole charge contributions are not very important in this limit for, for weak deflection angles. So uh, in figure two, we, we, we exhibit the classical differential scattering cross section of the ABG regular black hole, normalized by the Schwarzschild result for different values of a normalized electric charge. And we can see two very interest, interesting things here. The first is that the, the magnitude of the intensity flux increase as increase the values of alpha. And we can find some, for, for, for a certain range for, for, giving that, for, giving, uh, for giving range of the scattering angle, the classical differential scattering cross-section of the HBG regular black hole is smaller than the Schwarzschild case. Uh, this also happens for, uh, this also occurs for the Heisenhoff case, but it's not a true for, uh, for every model of regular black hole. For instance, for the Bargin case, uh, uh, this kind of behavior doesn't, occur, doesn't occur. So uh, another approximation, which is a, a, a semi-class to approximation, is the, glory, uh, is the glory formula. Basically, as we approach the, the as the scattering angle approach, the approach pi, approach the backward direction, we can use this equation here to resemble the behavior of the, the differential scattering cross-section, uh, where omega, omega is the frequency, frequency BG is the, is the impact parameter uh, of the backscattered uh, rays. G0 is the best function of the first kind. So this equation is actually very important because we can anticipate some characteristics, characteristics pro some properties of the different scattering cross-section. So in figure three, we, we display the glory parameters BG. And this term here, uh, which is related with the magnitude of the intensity flux. So uh, we can see that BG decreases as we increase the values of alpha. So uh, from this behavior here, we, can, we, we, know, we will see that the interference fringe, fringe with it uh, uh, increases as we uh, increase the values of, of alpha. And we see that uh, the, this, this blue line here associated with this uh, term here increases as we increase the values of alpha. Alpha, so we, see, we will see that the magnitude of the intensity flux increases as we increase the values of alpha. So now let's move on to the uh, partial waves approach. And we start talking about the scalar field. So the klein god equation can be written as given by equation 12, where uh, phi is the field, uh, g mu is the metric tensor, and g is the determinant of the metric tensor. So Taking into account the symmetries of the space-time, we can decompose the scalar field as given by equation 13, 
where C omega L are constant coefficients that will be determined by the boundary conditions, and omega and L are the frequency and the angular momentum of the wave, respectively. So psi is the, is the radial function, and P are the Legendre polynomials. So the radial function is given by equation 14, right? Uh, and the effective potential is given by equation 15. So uh, to obtain the scattering cross-section, we first need to impose some boundary conditions. And for the scattering problem, the boundary conditions that we use are given by equation 16. Uh, uh, they are consistent with a scalar wave coming from, infin from infinity towards, uh, to the black hole that when interacting with the effective potential is partially reflect back to infinity and partially transmitted to the black hole. And these uh, quantities here, these uh, uh, T and R, are, uh, are complex coefficients that satisfies the equation 17. So uh, the differential scattering cross-section is given by, the, by this expression here, so it is the is the ratio between the scattered flux per, per unity of solid angle to the instant flux. So uh, we, what we uh, actually do is use the partial waves approach. So the partial waves approach consists in of writing the field as a sum of partial waves contributions. And, what, and when we, by doing this, uh, uh, look into the field as a sum of partial waves contributions, we can actually write the, the, the differential scattering cross-section as given by equation 18, where H theta uh, is given by this equation here. And this exponential term here is related with the phase shifts, shifts given by equation 20. So now uh, we can move on to our main, uh, our main results. But before I discuss, the, uh, discuss this, I, I, I wish to point out some things about uh, numerical method. So uh, the key goal of, uh, of the numerical method is to obtain these coefficients, these co these coefficients here. So to obtain them, we need to solve uh, the equation for, uh, 14 numerically. But uh, uh, we do not, we, uh, there is several ways to solve this uh, differential equation. But it, and the met method that we use it is, is this stiffness switch integration method. And we use this method because the scattering cross-section diverts very fast as we can see the small values of the scattering angle. So by using this method here, we can imp uh, improve our precision, uh, our accuracy, and the speed of the numerical computations. Besi so uh, we match, then we match the numerical solutions of the equation 14 with the boundary conditions given by equation 16, which are these boundary conditions here that I showed before. And we also adopt the convergence method developed by Yen uh, in, uh, in the context of the Coulombic scattering and first applied to the black hole physics by Dolan and collaborators. The idea of use this, uh, this integration method combined with this conversion convergence method is related wha with wha what I explained uh, Earlier, the, the scattering cross-section diverts very fast. It, it, it does have a good convergence for small values of the scattering angle. So we can use these two methods combined to obtain uh, results that are more uh, with more accuracy. And more than that, uh, uh, you can obtain this uh, faster than if you do not use this convergence method here. So uh, we also need to perform the summations in the angular, mo angular momentum. And in our work, we consider summations up to L equal to 40. Uh, but it's important to, to understand that uh, as increase the, basically as, increase, as we increase the values of the frequency, since, you, since we write the field as a sum of partial wave contributions, uh, as we increase the values of the frequency, you need to consider uh, um, uh, more, more, ter more, more terms we, we need to perform a summation with more terms in the angular momentum, but here we, for L equals to 40 is enough. So now let's present some results. Uh, this, the idea of this figure here is just to show that our results are consistent with the numerical, with the analytic approximations. So our, uh, our results, uh, numerical results are given by this red curve here. So uh, which is the differential cross scattering cross-section of the ABG regular black hole for alpha equals 0 0.5 and omega equals to 4. 
So as you can see, our numerical results typically oscillate, uh, oscillate around the classical ones. Uh, and you can understand this oscillatory behavior in this case as a consequence of the fact that we are working with a scalar wave. And as we approach the, the backward direction, the Glorn approximation resembles very well our numerical results. Therefore, uh, our, numer uh, our numerical computations are in good agreement with the analytic approximations, and this is a very important result because uh, it's late with the consistency of our work. So in figure five, we exhibit the different scattering cross-section of the ABG regular black hole for distinct values of alpha and the frequency. So we can see, uh, we see that looking first to this right panel here, uh, as we increase the values of alpha, the interference fringe, fringe with it increases. And as we decrease the values of omega, here we have omega equals to one, and here omega equals to, equals to five, we see that the, 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 the interference fringe width also decreases when we dec uh, also increases when we decrease the values of omega. This can be anticipated from the behavior of the glory approximation, which uh, for which the interference fringe width is virtually proportional to the to omega and bg. And uh, we also notice from this behavior of these two figures here that for small values of the scattering angle the differential scattering cross-section diverge. This could also be seen for the classical differential scattering cross-section. And for a small value, and uh, regardless of the value of, that we choose for alpha, for the charge, in the, uh, uh, for, weak deflect, for small deflection angles, the charge contributions are not relevant. This is also related, this also can be, this is also predicted by the behavior of the differential scattering cross of the classical differential scattering cross-section. So uh, in this figure here, we compare our uh, the differential scattering cross-sections of ABG and high neutron black holes for two distinct values of the normalized electric charge. We can see that for small values of the, uh, of the charge, the results for ABG and high neutron black holes are very similar. But we already expect this for small values of the normalized electric charge, since both black hole solutions tends to the Schwarzschild case. Schwarzschild case. Uh, but as we increase the values of alpha, considering, for instance, alpha equals 0 0.8, uh, the interference fringe with it of the Heisenstein case is uh, larger than the, Abbe, than the case of the Ayano uh, Beato Garcia. So what we can try to do now is try to better understand the similarity between the differential scattering cross sections in the sense that uh, to, to answer uh, the question if it is possible to regular black, black holes mimic the, the differential scattering cross-section of standard black holes, which are those with intrinsic singularities. So to better understand this, we can, follow the, the, uh, we can do the following procedure. We can, uh, we can uh, consider the values of the pairs of normalized electric charge of ABG and Heisenstein black holes for which they, they, their impact parameter of backscatter rays coincide, is the same, right? So uh, in this, uh, ex essentially you get the BG for Heisenstrom and BG for uh, ABG, and you find the, va and you search for the values of the normalized electric charge for which these two quantities are equal. And once you find, and once that, uh, you, f you obtain this numerically, you can choose uh, some of the pairs along this straight, straight line and compute the differential scattering cross-section. And by doing so, we can actually obtain that the differential scattering cross-sections for ABG and Heisen Austrian black holes can be very similar uh, up to, to moderate values of the normalized electric charge. Uh, that means that if you choose values uh, is mild to, mild to, to moderate values of the normalized electric charge. Here, for instance, we are considering alpha in the ABG case equals to 0 0.6. Uh, we can find uh, very similar configurations. But as we increase the values of alpha, some di uh, the differential scattering cross-sections start to differ, especially the magnitude of the intensity flux here, although the oscillatory profile remains very similar. So what we are seeing here is that it's possible to find configurations for which a regular black hole and a standard black hole uh, have the same scattering properties, uh, at least from the, 
for uh, the massive scale scattering, uh, for arbit arbitrary values of the scattering angle, right? Uh, and we can also think that if if the uh, if the, if it is possible to find such to find such configurations, if even for, even for small values of the frequency, and as you show uh, uh, in Figure 10, even if you uh, diminish the values of the frequency, if for small values of the frequency, the scattering cross sections of the ABG high noson black holes, as long as we consider the low to moderate values of alpha, remains very similar. So now let's move to the final remarks that. Uh, as the conclusions, we have investigated the scattering properties of a massless and chargeless test scalar field in the background of ABG regular black holes and compared our results with the highs and nostril ones. So we, uh, we saw that uh, by, uh, from the classical differential scattering cross-section that the intensity of the magnitude of the, the scattering flux increases as we increase the black hole charge, and we can find some values for, for some value, values for which the scattering cross section, the classical one of the ABG regular black hole, is smaller than the Schwarzschild case. Uh, this, uh, uh, as I said before, this also happens for the Heisenstrom case, but it doesn't happen for every kind of regular black hole. For instance, for the Barging case, this result uh, doesn't occur. So. Uh, we have shown also that our numerical results are consistent with, the, uh, uh, with some analytic approximations, which, which, which is very good because uh, uh, show that our results are consistent in some way. We have shown that uh, the interference frequent with it increases as we increase the values of the normalized electric charge or as we decrease the values of the frequency. And uh, we also uh, obtained that we can find configurations for which the ABG and Heisen Austin black holes can have very similar, uh, very similar scattering cross sections for low to moderate values of the normalized electric charge and even for small values of the frequency. Therefore, uh, we can conclude that regular, regular black holes indeed can mimic the scattering properties of the of standard black holes for arbitrary values of the scattering angle and even for small values of the frequency. So, uh, uh, as future perspectives, we can consider uh, massive, massive and or uh, it's not massive or massive and or charge scalar fields. That's what we are already working on. But we can also consider fields with high order spins. For instance, uh, gravitational and electromagnetic fields. And this is actually something very interesting, because as already discussed in the in the quasi normal mode physics. We know that the nonlinearities of the electromagnetic fields play a very important role in the propagation of, uh, of the electromagnetic and gravitational uh, perturbations. So uh, analyze the absorption scattering cross sections in these scenarios could be very interesting. And we can also consider, uh, uh, consider rotating space times. So here we have considered a spherically symmetric uh, black hole, but uh, the, the, the rotating version of the ABG solution is already known in the literature, so we can also consider the rotating case. So these are my acknowledgments. Uh, thank you all for your attention. <laughs>